Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Oh, to be in sunny Scotland. Andrew Gwynne is leading the Labour campaign for local elections in England as Shadow Community Secretary. He's well known for a spectacular bust-up with Boris Johnson, but he was also at Mr Corbyn's side during this week's meeting with Jewish leaders, and he joins me now. Why did that meeting go so badly? Well, I'm not sure it did go badly, Andrew. I think it was the start of a dialogue with the Board of Deputies and the Jewish Leadership Council. Uh, they put forward uh, in uh, a... Uh, frank and fair way to uh, the Labour Party, their views uh, and what they would like to see. Mm. Uh, and Jeremy Corbyn listened and uh, took on board a number of those issues and assurances were given that by the time we next meet, because this is the start of the dialogue, uh, sufficient progress will be made on a number of those issues. OK, well, um, the Board of Deputies and Jewish, Leader Council, Jewish Leadership Council said our meeting with Jeremy Corbyn was a disappointing missed opportunity. He failed to agree any of the concrete actions we raised. And Gillian Merron, Chief Executive of the Board of Deputies, said the meeting did not go as well as hoped. The leaders' team delivered a lot of warm words, but little in the way of actions. Can we go through some of the things that they wanted? out of this meeting. That, Absolutely. So, for instance, would you personally share a platform with somebody who had been expelled from the Labour Party for anti-Semitism? No, and it's been made very clear by Jeremy Corbyn that nobody should be sharing a platform with anybody mm. who has been found guilty of anti-Semitism. That is absolutely clear. Anybody who is expelled so, from the Labour Party, we should not be sharing platforms so that, with these people. So why very did you clear. not write it? I mean, they wanted you to write this into, into your rule book. Why did you not do that? Well, of course, it's very clear already. You, you should not, uh, as a Labour Party member, share a platform mm. with anybody who has been expelled from the Labour Party. The second thing that they asked for is that you should adopt the internationally agreed definition of anti-Semitism. Now you've adopted the, the headline agreement but not lots of the examples that were given after that headline and again why not? Well one of the action points that was agreed was that we want to go further. We've written into the rules the international definition uh, but in terms of examples we don't actually think that those examples go far enough. So for example in uh, the Chakrabarti report uh, she uh, highlights the uh, use of the term Zio and uh, that isn't yes. something that for example is included in the examples we want to work with the Board of Deputies. So you want to go further well, you're saying? We, we absolutely you... do we want to work with the Board of Deputies and with the Jewish Leadership Council to write into Labour Party rules uh, a much broader definition uh, of okay. uh, anti-Semitism well, that goes beyond that including terms like Zio which quite frankly are abhorrent and insulting. That's really interesting. Can I ask you about some of the examples that they give that they wanted you to include and you, they say you haven't? Holding Jews collectively responsible for the actions of the State of Israel. You're Jewish, you're responsible for what's going on in Palestine, that kind of thing. Well, let me make it absolutely clear, Andrew. I spoke in the anti-Semitism debate in the House of Commons. I opened for uh, the Labour Party front bench. I made it absolutely clear that in a democracy, it is right to criticise any government of any nation, just as we would criticise the British government and the actions of the British government, it is right, where appropriate, to be able to criticise the actions of the Israeli government. Criticising the Israeli government is acceptable in a democracy. Criticising the mean, people of yeah. Israel or Jewish people across the world is not. That is the fine line. And it is absolutely clear that fine line between democracy and anti-Semitism. It's just, I mean, it's slightly odd because you're, you're, you know, you're sounding very firm on all of these issues and very clear. But the Board of Deputies got the impression in this meeting that you weren't going to accept these internationally agreed uh, examples. And they've been agreed by about 130 British councils, by the Scottish Parliament, the Welsh Assembly, the CPS, the police, and yet not by the Labour Party. Well, by the time of the next meeting, we're meeting again in July after the uh, National Executive Committee meeting uh, in July. Um, I hope that we will be able to meet again, go through the progress that has been made, because many of the asks that were put forward, uh, it was agreed to take mm. away, for example, to expedite some of the historic cases, particularly 
particularly the high profile cases um, and uh, hopefully by July we will be able to show the Board of Deputies and the Jewish Leadership Council that real progress has been made because let's be clear um, we have to make progress on this we've not done nearly enough quickly enough uh, and uh, that is recognised across mm. the Labour Party. It's recognised by our new General Secretary, Jenny yeah. Formby. We are determined not just to call out anti-Semitism, but to root out anti-Semitism. It has no place in the Labour Party. So in that case, why did you not accept the need for an independent ombudsman, as you were asked? Well, this gets a little bit tricky because you will know that there are uh, changes to data protection rules that are uh, affecting all organisations. Okay. And that does mean that we aren't so able to... Okay. Well, we, we aren't able right. to share third, with third parties details of our party members, but we are employing a general counsel to be able to expedite these cases, to offer the transparency that's needed. And I the, hope that by the time we next meet, we will have made sufficient progress in making sure that anti-Semitism, those complaints of anti-Semitism, aren't just called out, they're rooted out of our party. Do you think that the issue of anti-Semitism is being used by Labour MPs to attack Jeremy Corbyn? No, and Jeremy's made that very clear, that the notion that these are smears against the Labour Party, uh, he does not accept that. It is perfectly so, valid to for... To be clear, it, you, don't, you think Len is, McCluskey is wrong about that? Well, Jeremy Corbyn has said that he doesn't agree with Len McCluskey on this. It is perfectly acceptable mm. for Labour MPs to call out anti-Semitism in our party and in our movement and it is incumbent on our party and our movement to then act and root it out. MPs such as Chris Leslie, Neil Coyle, John Woodcock, Wes Streeting, Ian Austin and others have become a dismal chorus whose every dirge makes winning a Labour government more difficult, says Len McCluskey. Is that, is what he says more damaging to the Labour Party or the dismal chorus? Which Look, is it? it's neither. I think what we've got to do, we've got to acknowledge that there it's is, both, well, no, there is an issue of anti-Semitism on the left of British politics. It's not just something that affects the right of British politics. There is an element in the left. It is a small element. We have to root it out. It has no place in the Labour movement in the Labour Party, end of. You couldn't be clearer about that. You're in charge of the local election campaign. Are you concerned that this issue is doing damage to Labour on the ground? Well, I hope not, because I think we've got a positive message. We've got a message that after eight years of Tory austerity that has really hurt our councils, really hurt our public services, that the uh, local populations that go to the polls ne th next Thursday have an opportunity to make their voice heard, to tell Theresa May's government that we We've had enough of these cuts to public services. And cuts have consequences, and, Andrew. OK, and on election night, where are you looking for in terms of a good result? Are you expecting a really good result in London? What about the big metropolitan areas? Where, where, where should we all be looking at? Well, we're predicting uh, that uh, because these were high watermark years when the seats were la last fought in 2014, uh, that it's probably going to be difficult to get anything like You're as close as... You're playing expectations, well, Andrew Gwynn. Well, 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 let's be realistic here. We've never, ever held the city of Westminster. We last held Wandsworth in 1978. So if we, you take those, it'd be a great night. Well, you. if we took those, it would be a spectacular night. I'm, I'm confident that we will have a good night. I don't think it will be anything like some of the opinion polls would suggest because we are already defending about 80% of the seats in some of those metropolitan boroughs and London boroughs. We're already at a high watermark. But the message is, if you want progressive politics, if you right. want to send the government a message, you have to vote Labour on the 3rd of May. Andrew Gwynn, thanks very much indeed for talking to us.